Let's talk about how to play in the bleak midwinter, arranged by Gustav Holtz, such a great composer. And this is a classic Christmas tune. Even though it has the word bleak in the title, it's such a beautiful tune. So first off, I'll play it for you and then we'll dive into step-by-step -step how you can play this as well. If you would like to download the music for this that we're using in this video, then there's a link below and you can download a book with 30 Christmas tunes or holiday tunes from around the world, but mostly from the Anglo tradition. And that's in sheet music and tabs and chords and lyrics. So you can strum and sing along if you'd like to, or play it as solo arrangements. So let's take a listen. Such a lovely tune. So let's take a look at this piece from a bird's eye perspective. Just looking at the piece all is one thing and just see what we see. So first off, we can look at it. There's one sharp, that means we'll have an F sharp, second fret instead of first fret if, if, if it's down there. Looking through, we've got some pretty high notes up here. And so we know that we're gonna be moving around the neck. I can just kind of glance through and see that there are these high notes all over the place. We also see that there's some bar chords in here, a couple of little bar chords. So we'll take care of those. We've got a writ over here. We'll talk about that. And as far as defining features of the, uh, of the piece, those are a few. We can also look at this pattern and see that we have this, this rhythm right here. And this rhythm repeats quite often. And so there it is again. And so we can get, we'll talk all about that rhythm as we get into it here. We also have a pattern that we're seeing in the second and fourth bars. So here we have two half notes and then we have the whole note. Here it is again, two halves. There's a whole, here it is uh, kind of two halves and a whole, two halves and a whole. So all the way through, we have this busy bar, light bar, busy bar, light bar. And so it goes back in this, in this pattern. So that's just something as you're learning it to keep in mind. Great, so let's dive in. Let's get our hands on the guitar. So first off, let's look at this rhythm right here. So before we even look at the notes, let's just clap and count this rhythm. Now, if you know how to sing the piece, then that's gonna give you a leg up on this rhythm, but it's still good to know exactly how it falls. So we have a dotted quarter, which gets, we can say, three eighth notes, one, two, three. And then we have an eighth note that comes in on the fourth, and then five, six, seven, eight. So really, uh, if we clap and count, we could go one and two and three and four. And so that the clap happens on the one, the and of two, if we're counting one and two and three and four, and, and then the three and the four. Or if we're counting to eight, if that's easier for you, you can go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So one, four, five, seven would be the counts if you're just counting in eight. Well, now let's look at these first couple of measures. So we've got just the melody. Don't worry about these notes underneath yet. They're just open strings anyway, but we'll just ignore them. So we have B up on the seventh fret. So the seventh fret of the first string, one and two and three and four and one. So let's talk about this. So we have the seventh fret, eight, 10, back to seventh, and then slide down to the fifth fret. Now, it's a good thing to keep your hand in this really nice 
parallel position, if this part of the, of the hand is parallel to the bottom of the neck, because that'll make it easy to get to this note with the little finger down here. If you crook your hand like this, which is very popular, it's gonna be harder to get that and it'll mute out the other finger. It's just not gonna be as clean. So much better to put your thumb on the back of the guitar behind your fingers and keep it straight and then just move the entire unit down to the other fret. So, and two, four, and one, and two, and so fifth fret, and then coming in on the eighth fret with the little finger. And you can just practice that transition. You gotta make a nice little tunnel so that you don't lift, because we wanna connect those notes because it's one word, it's, it's winter in the, in the lyrics. So we don't wanna lift. Instead, we wanna connect them, and that means making a nice little tunnel with your little finger. So now let's look at those lower voices on here. For the first measure, we have the open second and third string, and then the second measure, we have the open sixth and second string. And so then playing those together, you can count still if you would like to, it's a great habit. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. So looking at measure three now, We've got this exact same rhythm, so you've already done your good work on that. One and two and three and four and one. And so, so we've got the exact same rhythm, different notes. We have the fifth fret and the seventh fret, open and back to the fifth. Now let's put these bass notes in. So on the third measure, we have the open A, easy peasy. So if you'll notice, we have the open D down there, right here. And now what are our notes here? Our notes here are the seventh fret with the third and fourth fingers, and then that fifth fret up there. This is part of a, this is a D chord. This is part of a, this, this big bar chord, but we're just using the open string for this. And so get your fingers up by the frets as best you can. You're gonna have to angle your hand a little bit to play this. If it's really squared up, then that third finger won't be able to get to the fret and it'll buzz, so you don't want that. So the whole measure three and four, one and two and three and four and one. And while you're in the air for this open string right here, you can be preparing this position so right on that open string, get your hand poised on top and you can just drop right in. So it looks like, and two, and three, and four. Boom, get right in there, mm. and then drop in. You can even lightly touch those if you can keep it off of that first string. You could touch right here and then that can make it even easier to drop in. Pro tip. So putting the whole line together, we have All right, let's move on to measure five. So I'll just play this line for you and then we'll talk about it. Did any of that sound familiar? The first half is exactly like the first half of the first line. So you've already done that good work. And so we can just focus then on going forward into measure seven. So then looking here, we have this bar chord on the fifth. And so we're gonna bar across three strings with the first finger. And we do that by just laying it over there. Keep the thumb behind it. Don't let the thumb cross over. Keep the thumb behind it. And then we have this. And then the, the little finger can come up and play that seventh fret. And so to practice this, you might just play back and forth just to get used to that movement. So 
we have one and two and slide the little finger to the fourth where that just was. Keep your hand nice and parallel to the neck or perpendicular. It just comes in. This part of the hand is parallel to the bottom of the neck because that will set your little finger up on the fifth fret so that your second finger can come get the third fret very easily. So just like you're using one and four up here, and you could practice that way. Just back, just to get the movements, and then putting it in with the bar, one and two and three and four and one. So here with this rhythm, it's similar to the rhythm in the first measure, but it is slightly different. So now this little bit right here, this falls on the last. So the and of four or the eight, if we're counting to eight, and this would be uh, one and two and three and four and or one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one. And so that's the way that that would play out there. And you can clap and count that if you'd like to. So then play in that one and two and three and four and one. And this is besides this first barred note, we just have open strings for the open fourth and then the open second and third. Really lovely. So the whole line Very sensitive and beautiful writing, really nice. Before we go to measure nine, let me just mention, we've been talking all about the left hand, we haven't really talked about the right hand. And at this speed of a piece, it doesn't really matter what fingers you play. With a faster piece, it absolutely matters how you use your right hand and, and which fingers you play. But for a slow piece like this, it doesn't make as much difference because you can repeat fingers, you can do anything else like that that you, that you would like to. Now, one of the, the rules with the right hand fingering is that whenever we have two notes that are quick together, that we don't repeat fingers then, such as that eighth note of one and two and three. So you could change fingers in the right hand for those two fingers, but at the same time, it's not all that fast. And so it's not gonna mess up the rhythm probably if you did use the, the same finger. So while on a faster piece, I would be a stickler for right hand fingerings, it's less of a deal with this piece. It's sometimes nice to use the same finger on the top string so that the melody sound stays consistent. And so you can think about that if you would like to. Measure nine. Let me just play this for you first. We're back to this bar chord. Let's talk about this. So the rhythm is just like measure one and two, except for there's an extra note in there in measure two. But so starting up here, make sure that your hand is again parallel so that that pinky stays nice and curved. You don't want to go like this and flatten it out. You'll get buzz notes and it's just not going to be as strong. Keep it nice and a C shape in your hand. So the melody is up on the little finger, and then three, four again. Now we're gonna shift up two frets from this finger. So if you think about from the second finger, it's a big jump way up there, but if you think about it from the little finger, then it's really just two frets up from there, and you just do it with the second finger, like that. So you can just practice that shift from the fourth finger here to the second finger there back and forth, back and forth to get that shift really nice and clean. Get right up by the fret on that high note so that it doesn't. So we have. And if your hand stays nice and parallel, then your little finger's just right there for the top note. 
Now this is the 12th fret, this is the highest note of the piece. It is on a classical guitar where the body meets. And so ideally you have a dot on your seventh fret and then, so that's a nice landmark. And then another landmark is where the body meets the guitar and that's the 12th fret. And then from here, we're just gonna come down to the seventh fret. And when you're playing these two repeated notes right here, you can be looking down here at where you're going. So look down, don't sit there and look at the 12th fret while you're playing them. Look down at the seventh, and that way, when it's time to go, you'll just be able to go right there. And then, keeping this shape in your hand, the little finger is right in place to go there. So we're up on the fourth finger again, and when we have four, one, then, this is where we're at right here, then we're gonna go to the second string and go four, two. So fourth finger on the 10th fret, two on the eighth fret, and then we're going to bar on the seventh fret, just two strings, and play both of those on the seventh. And so listen to that. And try to connect that melody as beautifully as you possibly can. Ideally, there's no, there's no jumps in there. Ideally not. Ideally is we just smooth right in there. That's a listening game as much as a hand game. So you're gonna use your ears extremely precisely in this piece to keep everything just really nice and pristine as much as you possibly can. Just listen to the notes, listen to the notes connecting from one to the next, making these beautiful flowing lines that's really where the magic happens, is in the ear, not in the fingers. And that brings us to measure 13. And this measure 13 to the end is a bit of a bonus. It's a little bit of a freebie because this line, these last four measures, are exactly like the first four measures. So you've already done the work on it and you can just play those measures again. Musically, it'll be different because we've heard it before and so coming back, it's like a return home, like the the hero's journey of you, you leave, you have a little adventure, and then you come home. This is the coming home part. And so, we've been changed by the experience. And so it's familiar, but it's different because we're different, because we've heard other things. So that's the, the narrative of the, of the storyline there not of the lyrics, but of the, of the music itself and of the writing. So we also have this writ up here. And so let's talk about that. Writ is short for retard, which means to slow down. And so this is just a nice way to put the little finishing chocolate at the end of the meal. We've got and then here, A retard only works if you have steady rhythm before it. Otherwise, it's just wish, everything's just wishy-washy. So because we have this at the end, we don't want to put any sort of expression with the time. We don't want to push or pull or stretch the time before this at all. We want to keep the time absolutely clean the entire time, just right in time. That way, whenever we come here and we slow down a little bit, it actually means something. If we've been wishy-washy with the rhythm the whole time, it's not going to make any, it's not gonna make a big splash when we get here. So instead, keep everything as, as well-timed as you can up to this point. And then here, you can just let it stretch just a little bit at the very end, and that'll just put it to bed. You can also, there's four verses to this piece, and if you'd like to, you can skip the retard and only put it at choice spots, some of them or even just the last one. So that's an option for you as well. 
when you're doing the retard, we need to know that you're actually doing a retard. So then start these first two almost like really close to in rhythm and then slow it down from here to here and then for and then forward so that we know that we're doing it. If you only slow down on this last eighth note, then it's just going to sound out of time. So keeping this, this is the second measure here, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one. So you can think about the smaller dip, 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 and slow that down. And that's going to make a, for a cleaner retard. So you can play with it. Let your ear be your guide and just, just have fun with it. Practice, practice. Don't expect that it'll be easy to do the first time or that you'll get it just right. Listen, 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 and just keep refining it. All right. This has been In the Bleak Midwinter. Such a beautiful tune, such a joy to play around the holidays. And so I hope that you enjoy it. Again, if you would like to download a book of 30 pieces like this arranged for guitar with the chords and the lyrics and the tab and the notation, there's also a just notation version if you'd like as well. So if you don't want any of the other stuff and you just want the sheet music musical notation, we've got one of those as well. So find that at the link below. Thanks so much for watching and best of luck in your playing in the bleak midwinter. Talk to you soon. Bye bye.